Here I've got a nice problem, which was part of the team selection test for Greece in the year 2016. And as we look at the solution, I think what you'll notice is some interesting techniques are used to solve this problem. Okay, so let's look at the statement of this problem. So we wanna define a recursive sequence by a zero equals three, and then a n plus one equals n plus one times a n minus n. Then we want to find all natural numbers m such that the GCD of m with a n is equal to 1 for all n bigger than or equal to 0. And I want to give you guys a couple of hints before we look at the solution. And so if you want to try this problem without any hints, maybe now is the time to do it. And now we'll get some of those hints on the board. Okay, so here are those aforementioned hints that will get you started if you want to try this problem with some hints. So first, a recursively defined sequence like this, where one term depends on the last term with a multiplication by something involving n, implies that the use of an exponential generating function might be helpful. So it's an exponential generating function instead of an ordinary gener generating function because we've got multiplication by our index here. So I'll let you guys look up what an exponential generating function is if you want to try this using this hint. Furthermore, once you get a closed form for this sequence, you might find Wilson's theorem useful. So Wilson's theorem says for all odd primes, this actually works for all primes, but we'll just use it for odd primes, we have p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p. Okay, so now let's jump into the solution. Okay, so we'll start off by defining the exponential generating function for our sequence. So exponential generating functions have the following form. I'll call ours equal to a of x. So this will be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a sub n over n factorial times x to the n. So this differs from an ordinary generating function in that we divide every term by n factorial. Why is it called an exponential generating function? Well, notice if all of these a n's were 1, we would get exactly the Taylor series for e to the x. Okay, nice. So now let's apply our recursion after pulling out the zeroth term, of course. So this is going to be equal to 3 plus, now we've got the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity, a n over n factorial times x to the n. Now we'll re-index this sum. Let's replace n with n plus 1. So that will have the effect of starting this at n equals zero, and then this will be n plus one in the index here. This term will be n plus one factorial, and then this will be n plus one in my exponent. Now that I've got it written like that, I can apply the recursion to this a sub n plus one term. That's gonna leave me with three plus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a n plus one, but I'll replace that with this term right here. So I've got n plus one a n minus n, that's all over n plus one factorial, and then multiplied by x to the n plus one. Now this naturally breaks up into two sums, one involving this n plus one times a n, and the other one involving this minus n. So let's break that up. So here we'll have three plus, now I'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n plus one over n plus one factorial, but that cancels down to one over n factorial. So that leaves me with a n over n factorial. Let's maybe just put that as a note down here. What we did is use the fact that n plus one over n plus one factorial is equal to one over n factorial. So that's a standard trick for simplifying this type of stuff. And then we'll have this is multiplied by x to the n plus one. Then we've got this next term which involves this minus n. So that'll be minus my sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n over n plus one factorial times x to the n plus one. 
Now, where can we go from here? Well, let's notice that this second term almost looks like our original exponential generating function. We just have an x to the n plus 1 instead of an x to the n. But we can remedy that very, very easily by factoring out one multiple of x. So by putting an x out here, we can change that from the n plus first power to the nth power. Then next up, this n over n plus 1 factorial is almost helpful for simplification, but not quite. Because we have an n plus 1 times an n times an n minus 1 in the denominator, these are not exactly lining up in a way that will make the simplification really useful. But luckily, we could use the old mathematical trick of just adding 0 to make this more useful. So let's replace this n with n plus 1 minus 1. So n plus 1 will interact with the n plus 1 factorial very nicely. And then we'll have 1 over n plus 1 factorial, and maybe we can do something with that. Okay, so let's apply each of these observations that we made. So we still have this is 3 plus x times a of x. Recall this is just our original exponential generating function. And then we'll have minus the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of n plus 1 factorial, sorry, n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, and then plus the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1. Okay, so what happened here? Why is that a plus and not a minus? Well, it's a plus because this minus sign distributes over to this minus. Oh, and I see that I left off an x to the n plus 1 here. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of simplification. Then after doing that little bit of simplification, we'll bring everything up to the top of the next board. So first off, we can take this n plus 1, cancel it in the numerator, and cancel that denominator down to n factorial. At the same time, we'll take this plus 1 on the exponent and move that out so we'll have minus x on the outside and then x to the n on the inside. Well, let's see what we've got here. This is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. But that is exactly the Taylor series for e to the x. Then what do we have going on over here? Well, it's not super clear yet. But in order to make it a little bit more clear, let's start off by doing a little bit of an index change so that we have n factorial and x to the n. And we can do that by making a replacement n with n minus 1. So that's going to change this n plus 1 factorial to an n factorial. This x to the n plus 1 will just be x to the n. And then we're going to start here at n equals 1 instead of n equals 0. So now that we've got all of this taken care of, it's a bit of a mess, but we can clean it up at the top of the next board. After cleaning up what we had at the bottom of the last board, we've got the following kind of nicer equation. We've got our exponential generating function a of x. Let's recall what that is up here just so that we have it on hand. This is the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity a n over n factorial x to the n, where those a n's are the terms from our sequence that's being recursively defined over here. Okay, so we've got x a of x, like I said, and then minus x e to the x. We argued why we get an e to the x here. Then we've got this other term that we haven't quite taken care of yet. Notice it's the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. That's almost another copy of e to the x. And it would be if it started at n equals 0 instead of n equals 1. But we can just add the 0th term on and then also subtract the 0th term. And we haven't changed anything, but we've changed the sum into a form that is easier to work with. So let's do that. I'm going to replace this 1 with a 0. That means I added on the 0th term, but the 0th term is 1, so I need to subtract a 1 so that I haven't changed anything at all. Okay, so let's see what I've got. So taking this x a to the x to the other side and then factoring, you see that I have 1 minus x times a of x. 
equals two, that comes from this three minus one, and then plus, well look, this turns into e to the x after adding that zeroth term on, but I can factor an e to the x out of these two terms and write it as one minus x. I just changed the order there so it looked a little bit nicer, kind of like what we have over here on the left-hand side. Now we can solve for a of x by dividing by one minus x. That gives us a of x equals two over one minus x plus e to the x. So that's our exponential generating function for our sequence. Now we can re-expand these as power series in order to get a closed form. So let's do that. So this is a standard geometric series, which means we can write this as the sum, as n goes from zero up to infinity of two times x to the n. Well, really we probably would take this two out, but we want to leave it inside so that it can interact with the expansion of e to the x nicely. Okay, then expanding e to the x, we have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of one over n factorial x to the n. Okay, so now let's smush those together and then use the fact that we can rewrite two as two times n factorial over n factorial to combine these things with a common denominator. So that's gonna leave us with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two times n factorial plus one over n factorial x to the n. But let's recall that our exponential generating function is the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a n over n factorial x to the n, which means we have determined a closed form for a n. Notice a n lives in the left hand power series right there, and the role being played by that in the right hand power series is this two times n factorial plus one. So we've got a nice and closed form for our recursively defined sequence. So now that we've got that, let's use this closed form to finish this problem off. On the last board, we determined a closed form for our recursively defined sequence was a of n equals two times n factorial plus one. So let's first notice that this number is always odd. I don't think really much needs to be said about that. That's pretty clear. We've got two times something, that makes an even number plus one, that is an odd number. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us that the GCD of two to the K with a n is equal to one, and that's gotta be true for all K bigger than or equal to zero. So in other words, all powers of two are relatively prime to values of our sequence. Now maybe that's all such m, but we still have a lot to prove to get there. And that being said, thinking about it, that's probably all such n that will satisfy this relatively prime condition. And why is that? Well, I mean, this is a math contest problem or a team selection test problem. And generally, once you get to this stage of the problem, the most obvious answer is usually the correct answer. And the trouble is just proving that that is the correct answer. So we'll actually claim the following claim, if you will, that will finish all of this off. So if M is bigger than or equal to three and odd, then the GCD of M with a N is not equal to one. And if we can prove this claim, then indeed only powers of two satisfy this rule. Okay, so let's get to this claim. So if M is bigger than or equal to three and odd, then that means there exists an odd prime P such that P divides M. Okay, well that's just essentially the definition of oddness together with the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now this fact that we're talking about a prime along with a factorial really gives us a hint that we should probably look at Wilson's theorem. So let's see what that will give us. Notice by Wilson's theorem, we know that P minus one factorial is congruent to negative one modulo P. 
But notice we've got two times something factorial, not something factorial by itself. But we can tweak this a little bit. Notice that if we factor out a p minus one and a p minus two, we're left with p minus three factorial. And then that product will be also congruent to negative one mod p because we've just factored. But reducing mod p, p minus one is negative one, p minus two is negative two. If we multiply negative one and negative two, then we get positive two. So that tells us that two times p minus three factorial is congruent to negative one modulo p. But if we add one to both sides of this congruence, we get zero over on the right-hand side, and we achieve a sub p minus three on the left-hand side. So let's write that down. So notice a p minus three is equal to two times p minus three factorial plus one, which will be congruent to negative one plus one or zero mod p. But that tells us that p divides a sub p minus three. So look at what we've done. We found a prime that divides m and it divides a p minus three. So putting these two facts together, we see that the GCD of m with a p minus three is equal to p times k where k is some natural number. So k is bigger than or equal to one. Why is that? Well, these two divisibility statements mean that p divides the GCD. That means the GCD can't be one, and we've proven this claim, thus proving the only numbers that are relatively prime to all of our elements of our sequence are powers of two. And that's a good place to stop.